And then you've got now the kind of proliferation of empty fruit gyms who are neither. They're not fighting. They're not one rule. They'd love to be Misty Mountain fighters, but they're not. It's nothing. It's plastic fruit. And they're the kind of shape-making arts where you just go, nothing's really tested. It's all a bit, really, what, what do you want to be? You want to be one thing, but you haven't gone through the fire to be that thing. I've spent a lot of time in traditional jojo. I haven't actually spent a lot of time in gyms, combat sports gyms, things like that. Um, what what do you feel is kind of the difference in the experience for, you know, when you go to like a, a gym versus a dojo and, and what that kind of that culture? Three categories I'm going to, right? We're going to gonna have a traditional dojo, as in the um, Kodokan, May or may not be right that in Okinawa, go to a gym just down the road from Higona's place. Um, you'd call that traditional, right? It doesn't get much more traditional. As I say, it's only missing Mr. Miyagi. Um, then we're gonna then we do a fight gym, which is where I am, which is where I spent a lot, you know, these last few years MMA gyms, BJJ academies, and now this UFC gym, which is like a franchise fight gym, right? Which is as, as commercial as you can get. And then I'm going to call what I call the plastic fruit gyms, who are neither. Plastic fruit in that, you know, you eat it and it has nothing in there. It's all the pretense of one thing. So let's, let's do the Okinawan thing first, right? There is no traditional place. There's just people trying to do the best they can. Traditions and stories get built up away from the traditions and stories. So, for example, my old shiatsu teacher... His teacher was Japanese, or Ohashi. And Ohashi was, his, was Japanese, right? And toured the world teaching, did a lot of stuff on shiatsu and maternity and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, when he, and he understood the game. When he was in Japan, he would teach in English. And when he was in England or America, he would teach in Japanese because he understood people love the game of illusion, the misty mountain stuff, right? And it's easy to fall for that, isn't it? And, I, and that's what I, you know, when I went to Okinawa, I was like looking for that. And you realize, oh, this is just normal stuff. And in fact, it's not even better. It's not worse. It's, it's just another place. So there's your so-called traditional, right? And then you have now, we'll, we'll jump to the kind of the fight gyms. Now, the MMA gyms, most of them are, who've kind of almost pride themselves on getting away with all that sort of stuff, the histrionics and the fancy, right? No less, it's just a different moral code. It's no less traditional. It's a new traditional. It's like a culture moved on. So like here where I'm training now, there's the same amount of respect you'd have in a so-called traditional gym. Great training, respectful people. I just pay a membership rather than a kind of gratuity fee that, you know, you, you play with when you're at traditional gyms. And then you've got now the kind of proliferation of empty fruit gyms who are neither. They're not fighting. They're not one rule. They'd love to be Misty Mountain fighters, but they're not. It's nothing. It's plastic fruit. And they're the kind of shape-making arts where you just go, nothing's really tested. It's all a bit, really, what, what do you want to be? You want to be one thing, but you haven't gone through the fire to be that thing. Tradition and history is not made by looking at someone else's story. It's made by, I went through this, I went through fire. This is what I look like after I got singed, and this is now my history. So there's no point in copying someone else's. Make your own history. Make your own art. Make your own tradition. Um, and I found they all have their own ways. And and you have to make your own. Like it has to be your own. You can't you can't just be next to somebody who's lived their own. Uh, no. That's not enough. It doesn't work that way. And I feel and like the, about, I, I like the plastic it, fruit name. Yeah, and you see plastic fruit everywhere, Ken. And not just in martial arts. It's obvious in martial no. arts because the thing yeah. is that people want in martial arts. We all want to be tough, right? We all want to go, yeah, I can fight. Oh, yeah. and, and no one wants to fight for it. Completely fair enough. Everyone wants to be famous. No one sure. wants to work for it. Everyone wants to write a best-selling novel. No one wants to fix their paragraphs. I get it. I got it. But yeah. the thing is, it, it is just all plastic fruit. It's all emptiness. And at some point, if you want to grow, I think, you have to go through the fire. The other thing you realize is it's only fun in the fire. That the fire is the means and the end. There's nothing else. Mm. It's romantic, right? Like, I know for me, that definitely got me involved in the martial arts. All the movies, all the TV shows, all the stuff. Me too. Me I, too. I call it romantic. It's, it gets you right into it. It's like, that's not what it is, though. And the more you understand, the more 
You're like, we don't even need any of that stuff. And then you kind of miss it a little bit because you're like, well, I, kinda, I like that. You know, like the whole debate right now about kata, whether you not you should do kata. I'm like, yeah, I absolutely think you should do kata. I love kata. Do you, do I think you need kata? No, nah, no, nah, people don't need it. Um, some people might for their own headspace, maybe if it hits them. I know that's what it is for me. Where where I am when I do it um, is different than where I am in other places. But is it necessary in order to be capable? It's not, and I think. There's that that finding that balance can be really difficult of the part that it's okay. I think it's okay to love something that maybe doesn't match. Um, that's not the most efficient thing, or it's not the the best thing, or whatever. I mean, you can still love it just because you love it. Yeah, yeah. But this defense of something because it's it's the true art. It isn't. We just love stuff because we love stuff. I, I like Catra oh. as well. Do I use it at any shape as yeah. a teaching aid to improve my martial arts? No. Are there a million different things I do better now that it's 2022 and not 1816 than recreate a pattern of it? Yes, but I still do it because I just love it yeah. for di just, just like you. I love it for different things. And I think the fights, I mean, I don't see many of the fights online because I, I really don't engage too much in those sort of things. But really, the, the oh, battles sure. I have noticed are people holding on to their, I, I like your term, their kind of romanticism. And then if I let that go, it means that I've bought into the wrong thing that isn't. Yeah, sometimes you have to realize you married the wrong girl. So, right, right. That's it, right? Sometimes sometimes you get divorced, move on, find another thing. That is what happens. But of course, once, that, once you've set a certain amount of time and you're invested, you made that effort, to suddenly turn around and go, I was wrong, the ground beneath your feet shakes. And oh, yeah. it takes a lot of courage to go, I'm going to move on. I, I found this when I shifted from karate to jujitsu. And I, I mean, mm. I still do karate because it's in me. But sure. when, you, when you go, I mean, you, you know, you, you grapple, you've been on the mats and you realize I was brought up on a diet of uh, ridiculous, all this namby pamby rolling around on the thing. If you came in and took my legs, I'd knee you in the face before you even got there. Right. We've all done that as karate men. Except 100%. <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, that's, that knee. That, that knee is now. I'm standing on one leg for a guy who could have killed me if I was on four legs. And then you suddenly yeah. go, "Please tell me I haven't wasted 22 years, and that my fourth down or whatever. Oh, who cares? What, literally, literally means nothing. Please tell me that's not true." And you come out of that first session going, "You are kidding me!" <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. that's a hard reality to take, isn't it? Oh my god, that cracks me up because that was the exact like you I couldn't have painted him like that. That exact like I'll just knee you in the face. Like I'll yeah. literally you go for the double leg, I'll knee you in the face and make that. And then you find out that just makes it so much easier for them to put yeah. you on the ground. They know that there's only so many options you're going to do, and they know about that one. It's not a secret. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because strangely, they're athletes as well. As karate men, we go. They would never have considered we've got arms and legs. No, listen, guys, they're pretty good athletes. And if you put them in a dojo, they probably got your black belt sorted in about six months. To be, if, we, if we're all being completely honest about this. Now, right, that isn't right. to say I'm, I'm some big um, proselytizer for BJJ over karate. I'm not at all. That sure. isn't my point. Right. I'm talking about the ground beneath a shaking when we realize what we yeah. believed. And this happens in religions as well, right? Where you realize, mm -hmm. oh, wow, I did all this praying and, you know, my friend still died. You know, there's a point where things shake and you're like, oh, what do I what do I believe in now? And that's a very hard yeah. place to be. And actually just getting to that point where you go, I don't know. I don't know if I'm any good. I have no idea yeah. if I've wasted 20 years. But all I can do is just keep going forward with the best decision I make for the next step. And I think that's true of our life and of our martial arts, right? You talked about the like the, the 84,000th rep being the, the point of enlightenment. And and it's like, it's, it's no specific rep. I'd, I'd argue that very much that moment you just described whatever however many reps or however many things whatever many times you got to turn up to hit that moment and then question everything yeah and then have to work your way through it yeah. that's that's a huge part of it that and it happens at a different time for everybody and isn't that life though really ken because I, I do i do think that martial mm. arts is just a metaphor for life it's one vehicle of a million, right? A mi yep. I can't even name right. bazillion, whatever, not, whatever is a bigger number than that. I have no idea. It's just one vehicle, and that is just a metaphor for life, where we just trying to we go okay, and then sometimes it comes up. And but I do think the artistry of life then becomes mm. 
how much we can just absorb in that fire, absorb in the struggle rather than resisting, thinking that if I can get through this at the end is something great. No, no, this struggle is the great. And the quicker we fully embed in that, I think the quicker that rep, which goes, got it, got it. That's, it's cool. I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm trying to be okay that my kata is crap. And I'm trying to be okay that my triangles are not bad. And I'm trying to be okay that my arm bars suck, you know, whatever it may be. And then just, Mm -hmm. that's it there. Oh, that's being alive. Yeah. And that's fine. Happy days. I have a hard time even saying anything to that because I agree (laughs) so completely.